The word says something very specifically. It says, as a man thinks, so he is. Amen? So we know that our battles against voices and thoughts and so forth. You know, we've done some stupid things in our life and never asked ourselves, who told me that? But now that we have the knowledge that allows us to discern in the area to where there are voices that influence. The worst voice that influences you is you. It's called your old man. Amen? The old man. You ain't got to worry about demons. You got an old man. Demons will use your old man. 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to go where no man's gone before. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Is everybody there first? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Let's speak. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, Love, it profits me nothing. Love does what? Now, I want you to understand something. and This is so powerful. We're going to attempt to erase everything. Even humanity. Everything. And go beyond everything to God. To who he really is. Everyone say, God is love. God is love. Now, he's not worldly love. His love has got nothing to do about what we've seen and assumed and felt and stuff that's in the world. Amen? God is love. In other words... Humanity was created, all things were created out of God's love. God created things from his love and in his love. He created me and you in love. Amen? But it wasn't about me and you. It was about something to carry and express his love. So God not only, his love is so awesome that he, not, he wanted to share his love and give an opportunity for individuals to share it back. Because God is love. And so many times people lose sight of everything. Of who God really is. You know we call God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But before any of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is love. That's why he created everything. Everything is out of love. But it's not love of the world. It's. Love off this world. It's eternal love. And this is what he explains it right here. So you gotta, we got to begin to look at God as love, not just Trinity. Amen? Not just gifts of the Spirit and so forth. God, who God really is. He is love. And his love is light, and his love is life. He is love. And it says here in verse uh, 4, let's speak it. Love does what? What kind of love is this? It's God's love. This is him. Amen? He suffers. <laughs> love suffers long and is what? Kind. So you'll know whether you're walking in God's love or not. Are you kind? Are you a reactor? Nuclear even? Love suffers Long and is kind. Love does not what? Envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not what? Puffed up. 
does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, hello, selfish, is not provoked. Are you usually provoked? Thinks no evil. I just nullified every one of us. <laughs> Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in what? Truth. Bears all things. In other words, puts up with everything. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love does what? Never fail. Does God ever fail? No. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. It doesn't mean it's not here now. Amen. It's gonna, everything's going to come to an end. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Now, we, he just expressed the love of God. God is love, who he is. This is what he does. This is how he expresses himself towards me and you. And he's saying, look at if you're carrying my love, if you're carrying my presence, if you're carrying my spirit, these are the same fruits of my presence that's going to manifest through you. Then he comes to something, he says something very profound here in verse 11. He says, when I was a what? When I was a what? Child. A child is immature. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, mature, I put away what? childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Love. See, the love of God is pure. Amen? Love is the author of a mature mind. Love is the author of a what? Mature mind. That means mature thoughts. Suffers long, kind, not, is not envious, is, doesn't parade itself, doesn't puff it up, behaves, doesn't behave rudely. It rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes in all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love is God and God is love. Amen? When we become serious about a relationship, respectful and submissive, and all trusting in God, we put away immature thinking. You know, you get around people that it's worse first. That's immature. Fear. People that are in fear all the time is immature. Those are childish. I don't care if somebody's been a Christian 50 years. If they're still in that attitude, a way of thinking, they are immature. They haven't reached a mature level yet. Amen? And that's what the Spirit's trying to do right now. Bringing us, maturing the mind or maturing the thoughts. Bringing the body into a state of maturity. 1 John chapter 4. You know, he gave us the formula, and we know already about it. He said, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, right? So the only way to really grow is to be in a state of denying yourself in everything that you do. In verse 7, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Maturing the mind. So there's a process, isn't there? We suffer things. We, we are challenged so that we can mature. You know, when you get around somebody that's more mature than the other, they're more stable. They're more steadfast. They're not reactors. They're responders. Why? Because they trust him. 
Remember, God is love. And when you're really carrying his spirit of love, who is love, you're overcoming all things. Why? Because you know he loves you, you love him, you are in his love. That is a pure relationship. Now you're beginning to think like he thinks. You're beginning to see what he sees. You want to do the things that he wants you to do, not what you want to do. Everybody of us has a plan of some sort. Amen? But he says, get your plan out of my way. Even though you may have a good plan. He's got a better one. In verse 7, let's speak it. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that he might live through, that who we might live through him. In what? Love. Remember, everything that you see here, everything that this whole unit, stars, everything, everything was created out of love. You and I were created out of love. Why? So God could express himself or who he truly is in his creation. But of course, we know it got contaminated. Amen? Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to lo love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given of his spirit. For we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Now, for just a moment, go back to 1 Corinthians 13. Thank you, Master. But keep your hand where you're at. We're multitasking. Hallelujah. Again, in verse 4 it says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never what? Fails. There's God. Now if he's dwelling in me and you, in his love, and we are maturing in these thoughts, and understanding these things, then we have a relationship. Now go back to First John chapter four. In verse fifteen. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God. In other words, he was manifesting the fruits that we just talked about. Is abiding in him. Is everybody okay? Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. By what? His love. There is no fear in love. 
Fear is an enemy of love. But perfect love casts out fear. Wow. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, has not matured in the love of God. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. And who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment we've had from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. God is love. His spirit is love. His words are love. The enemy of love is fear. And this is, not again, not the love of the world, but the love beyond creation. Fear is destructive. Love is life and pure. Fear is evil and death. Perfect love is... And a mature mind casts out fear. Love is the purpose of all creation because God is love. Again, if you were to erase everything before creation, before anything, before the universe, before anything of knowledge, anything, God was there. But he was called love. No name, just love. Pure, radiant, powerful, energized. Love that can rip through anything. Psalm 26. Citation from the Lord. His love ripped through every part of my being and members. His light. I could, I could sense his love that was in light just go through every part of my body. Psalm 26, maturing the mind, or what we might call maturing the thoughts. Psalm 26, verse 1. Is everybody okay? I didn't lose anybody, right? Let's speak. If indicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind or my thoughts and my heart. My heart represents desires. So what is he saying? Listen, test me. Examine me. Check my thoughts out and check my desires out. And see if they're in love. See if they're of you. If they are associated with this love, this fruits of love, which is you. Because if they're not there, then you're not there. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idol idolatrous mortals. I love it. Those are called temporary morons. Nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assemble of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, and I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous words. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and a place where your glory dwells. He said, testing my thoughts, testing my desires to see if your love rules in both. This is called maturing the mind, maturing the thoughts. God created all things to release himself as love in all dimensions of creation, humanity and stars, earth, and so forth. Worship. Worship is an exchange of love. Obedience is an exchange of love. God is love and the author of a mature mind. Love is the author of a what? Mature mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So if there's not love, can there be a mature mind? No. This is the process, maturing the mind. First Corinthians chapter 2. In 
verse 1. Hallelujah. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech of, or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything about among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Was that God's expression of his love? Amen. I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Look at the world is doing right now. Many people are in the wisdom. Of, they're waiting for a vaccine. Oh, the wisdom of men. Don't take it. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him who are manifesting those areas of love. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, the carnal, the immature. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind or the thoughts of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of the Spirit of God. Does everybody understand? In other words, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, amen, is the mind of Christ. Now, he is also the divine nature. So your new man, your new created spirit is bound to the Spirit of God. But the new man still has to mature the thoughts. So that's what the Holy Spirit is. He's mentoring us so that we are now the new creation. It's just like a baby. You were born, when you were born again, you were a baby in Christ. Amen? So a baby still got to learn. Even though you got a new spirit, now you've got to begin to mature in the thoughts of God. And he does that by his spirit. That's why it's important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's not about manifesting the gifts of the Spirit, but tongues is an asset of connecting where things assist your spirit man to mature. Is everybody okay? We have the mind of the Spirit that is maturing the mind of the new man. Amen? Until they are one love. I'm going to say that again. We have the mind of the Spirit the new crea uh, uh, by the Spirit of God, the divine nature, who is maturing the mind of the new man until there is one love. In other words, united in one love, him. So we see here then the leading and the direction of love is called wisdom. Does everybody get it? The leading in the direction, because wisdom tells you what? What to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. He just said, so in God's love is wisdom. Go to Proverbs 2. So the leading in the direction of love, the guidance of love is called wisdom. Proverbs 2.
Proverbs chapter 2. Everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words, as his words love, yeah, and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. Well, see, wisdom and understanding equal what? Discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come up knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Wisdom and understanding equals discernment. Remember, wisdom is what to do. Understanding is how to do it. Discernment is the highest level of detail. It's detail. When you're able to discern, you are detail of everything. Everyone say detail. And this ain't about detail in a car. You hear me? And it's all in the love of God. Exodus 31. Remember, it always goes back to those fruits of God's love. Why? Because this is how God is maturing. Love is the author of a maturing mind. Something that's maturing is steadfast, immovable, doesn't change, no matter what the circumstances. Amen? Exodus 31, verse 1. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bazela, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, Ur, the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the what? Spirit of God. Is the Spirit of God love? Yes. In what? Wisdom and understanding in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works. Is that detail? Yeah. To work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels, jewels for setting in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. Now, he was doing that for them to build God's house, but God is doing that in us to build his house. Does everybody get it? The spirit of love is the spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Again, here we are, discernment, the high level of detail. This is called maturing the mind, maturing the thoughts. These are things when they are a part of you and you are understanding this, you're able to look behind all natural. You're able to look behind, beyond everything. All the troubles and circumstances, the fears and all the attacks, you're able to swim right out away from it. And step and cross over into who God is and who you are in Him. You are able to abide in Him. And this is where a maturing of the mind must take place. And that's what He's doing with His church right now. Go to James 3. You know, again, one of the things I, I, I really see so much is there's not enough individuals that maintain a crossover. Man, when you cross over, you don't want to come back. <laughs> In 
James chapter 3, verse 13. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff in worship and never cross over. Your spirit man crosses over. If you're still focused on you and all kinds of all this stuff, it's still you are completely focused on him. And the word says, those who set their minds on the Lord have what? Peace. Peace. It's when your mind is focused on everything else. You're a mess. James 3.13. Come now, you who say, oh, that's four, sorry. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him what? Show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. Is that God's love? Yeah. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth of God's love. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Pure. Holy. Then what? Peaceable. Man, when somebody's in that peace, there's no frustration. There's no nothing. You're just dead. <laughs> i never seen a dead person not look peaceful. Though I don't go around looking at dead people, you know. <laughs> I don't even go to the wakes. Those are ridiculous. Why are they called wakes? And I, when I was a kid, the wake, that means they're going to wake up? Wake. Sleep. <laughs> they don't call them sleeps. Because that dude ain't there. But the wisdom that's from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to what? Willing to what? Yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Maturing thoughts hold a place of purity, peace, gentleness, etc. The foundation of your walk and my walk is God's love. With what? All trust. No fear, no anxiousness, or self-preservation. We don't live for us anymore. 1 Corinthians 3. First Corinthians three, three verse one. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people or mature people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men or mortal men or temporary morons? And when one says, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one? I planted Apollos water, but God gave the what? The increase. <laughs> but God gave the what? Increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what? builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Wow. 
So we see here, building on the foundation of the love of God with a maturing mind. Hebrews 12. Hebrew 12. In verse 3. Hebrews 12, verse 3. says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord does what? Whom the Lord what? Loves. He chases and scourges every son whom he receives. So welcome to the chastening. See, now a maturing thoughts, a maturing mind says, thank you, Lord. Why? Because you're correcting me. You're putting me on the path of righteousness. An immature carnal mind says you're punishing me. Oh, you're punishing me. No, it's immature. It's still an immature thinking. That's where people think worse first. That's immature thinking. God is trying to get us to a place of mature thinking. That's what God thinks. How does he think? I mean, we can't think every one of his thoughts, amen? But he's given us enough to know. This is how we know who we are. See, a person that is, has a maturing state holds identity. One that doesn't, doesn't hold identity. They flip-flop. They put their identities and their abilities, their talents, their finances, their whatever, or their past. In fact, their immaturity is still living from the past. You cannot grow living from your past. You can only grow living from the future to the present. Amen? Verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? If you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of the spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. But he, for our profit, that we may be what? Partakers of his holiness or partakers of his love. Because perfect love casts out what? All fear, which is the enemy. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been what? Tra trained by it. So listen, you will be chastened more than once. We're all chastened. And we are trained by it. But you're going to either grow or you're going to go back. You're going to go back to the old man and let him control or go into the new man and mature. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. God's love. Remember, he corrects and protects. trying to grow us up quickly. He, everybody has the opportunity to mature. It's whether they cooperate with it or not. In Romans 12. You know, one of the things in maturing, as you begin to grow and mature, When you're asking God for something, he doesn't always do it. <laughs> People get rolled, oh, God, I can't believe God didn't do it. See, because when you begin to mature in that arena, you know that God knows best. 
Well, sh that's not what I prayed for. Whippy. That's what God knows best. Does everybody understand that? See, people get upset because God didn't do something the way they wanted to do it. Well, why did they get upset? Because the enemy brings you to you. Amen? He brings you to you. Oh, my gosh. Hurt my feelings. Oh, you poor little thing. Still going to you again, huh? Shame is about you. Guilt, condemnation is about. Amen? We are always walking away from us. We're always, why? Because when you walk away from you, you're walking away from the world. You're walking away from their traditions and all the other stuff. You are connected with his love and you are fulfilling his desire, not our own. Amen? Now we may think it's his desire, but until that mind is, those thoughts are maturing, you may think that something's God's desire when it's actually your carnal soulish desire. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. And do not be conformed to this what? World. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your thoughts or your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In other words, we are not... <laughs> We are being what? He said, so don't be conformed, but being transformed by the love of God and maturing of his thoughts in us. There's an exchange being made. So know that your challenges are always an opportunity for exchange. Does everybody got it? Your challenges are an opportunity for exchange. Can everybody get that? So when you run into a challenge, when you run into something, that's an opportunity for exchange. Hallelujah. Verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's carnal thinking. Well, I deserve more than this. And I, 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 I. Hello. It's immature. What about God knows best? Can you trust God all the way? That's maturing. And you, every one of us is challenged and will continue to be challenged to grow. Until you get to a point and I get to a point where everything is hallelujah. It's working to the good. Didn't feel good when that truck ran me over, but praise God. It's working to the good. <laughs> For I say through the grace of God given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we being, so as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let prophecy in proportion in our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who le leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without what? Hypocrisy. See, everything is surrounded by love. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer and distributing to the needs of the saints, even to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the what? Same thought pattern toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And do not be wise in your own eyes or in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. 
have regard for good things in sight of all men. And if possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Hallelujah. Third John. Third John. Oh, happy days. Maturing mind. A trained mind doesn't make excuses. There's no but ministry in that kind of thinking. But, 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 but. But is always a self-defense system. But what about, but what about, or a comparison? How come this person didn't do, but this, but how come, how come, and how come? That's immaturity. Amen? It's supposed to be you and God, not in you and everybody else. Third John, in verse 2, let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. The word prosper means mature. In what? All things and be in health just as your soul matures. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your thoughts matures, grows. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth or that they are maturing. Amen? Prosper is maturing in your way of thinking. I'm going to close at Romans 8. Maturing the mind. A matured mind will not backslide. Can't. Because it's always maintained active. It's always in that state, connected, connected, connected. It maintains. It cannot backslide unless it chooses to. It won't go back. It goes forward. Because it's very detailed. It's very sensitive. It's very discerning. If there is a consideration at all, triggers go off. Alarms go off. Does everybody understand? Somebody's touching that bob wire fence, that border. Psst, yo, don't even go there. Some people go back to their fence with rubber gloves on, you know? Listen, I can beat this. <laughs> That's immature thinking, <laughs> like you're going to outwit God, you know? Romans 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, or immature, carnal mind. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to what? Hello. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. So you're not going to, sin, for me and you, sin should be like an alarm that just goes crazy. There's no compromise in it. There's no touch in it. It's like no way. Why? Because your love for him and his, you know his love for you is so much greater. In fact, we look for conviction to keep connection. Verse 4. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, which is his love, these are what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear, which is an enemy of God's love. But you receive the spirit of adoption when we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. So there's no glorification without suffering either. And suffering is just the challenges of this world that we live in. Amen? For I consider that the suffering of this present time or challenges are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hello, you think God's going to release creation, his creation into immature? No way. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Because he's carnal, immature. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Pierce perseverance. We endure. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray as we ought to. But the Spirit himself makes what? Intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. It's called praying in tongues. Now he searches the hearts, knows what the thoughts of the spirit is or the mind because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when you're praying in tongues, you're praying the perfect will of God. Amen. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who what? To those who what? Love God. He says, if you love me, you obey me. If you love him, you're abiding in him. Remember, obedience is an opportunity of exchange. Worship is an opportunity of exchange. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 28 again. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall I say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Praise God. We want to reach a level of maturity in God's love and understanding of the challenges of exchange so that we, we may walk into and express his image and his likeness. For his glory. Amen. Remember a mind that is steadfast on the Lord is at peace. It's at peace. There's a maturing right now. God is trying to bring us to a place of maturing the mind so that we're steadfast. And everything immovable. Those that are ones that are standing strong. Amen. We're unveiled. We're unmasked. Thank God. There's no fear. There's no fear. It's pure love. Because perfect love casts out fear. So when I see all these people that are walking in fear, that's not perfect love. Even though they call themselves Christians, they're not abiding in God. They can't be. They're abiding according to the world. They're accepting what the world has to say instead of what God has to say. It's called fear. And fear is against God's love. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that you protect this seed that's been imparted in us so that it grows and bears fruits for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory, with a maturing mind. <laughs>